Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject has to do with websites and portals, key parts of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association, helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. This module is part of the Architecture and Systems Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program. In it, we'll look into the practice of website usability. Website usability is an approach to making websites easy to use. Upon arriving at your site, visitors should be able to intuitively relate the actions to be performed there with other interactions seen in the general domain of computing life. For instance, when an icon or hyperlink is clicked, something happens on the screen. No surprises, no specialized training, just a familiar set of actions and results. Broadly speaking, website usability is tied to these best practices. Present the information to the user in a clear and concise way. Make sure that the website navigation is simple, straightforward, and reliable. Give the correct choices to the users in a very obvious way. Eliminate any ambiguity regarding the consequences of an action, like clicking, deleting, purchasing, etc. And put the most important thing in the right place on a website page or a web application. A big part of usability is out-and-out -out accessibility, a term that speaks to the fundamental ability to actually discern what's on the site and enjoy a complete and rich viewing experience. For example, best practice is to avoid the use of tables to lay out web pages because different browsers and different versions of the same browsers can render them differently and result in quite the mixed up page. A reliance on multimedia plugins is a dicey way to go for similar browser compatibility reasons and for the simple fact that not everyone or every device has the ones you might require. Other recommendations include using standard color palettes to maximize the odds a visitor's screen will display them properly, and avoiding the use of color coding or color contrasts alone to highlight information since people with color blindness may not be able to tell the difference. Embedding alt tags in images so some information can be provided even if the image doesn't load, as well as avoiding the use of images as the sole means of navigation, supporting them by including text links as well. And thirdly, using scripts with care so as not to limit the experience of visitors who have turned off their browser scripting support. Usability is often overlooked as a discipline because site designers and owners know their sites so well that it's easy to forget that first-time visitors don't have the same familiarity. Usability testing, therefore, is a very good idea so that you can gauge how easily a newcomer can find his way around. A non-functional requirement, usability can't be directly measured but it can be quantified by means of indirect measures like, say, tracking the number and frequency of reported problems with the interface, navigation, or the vocabulary used on the site. The preferred method for this is to observe actual users of a working system. Although there are many variants, one accepted way is to perform direct user testing, which involves getting some representative users, asking them to perform representative tasks within the design, and then observing and recording what they do where they succeed, and where they have difficulties. It's important to test users individually and to let them solve any problems on their own, lest you sway the results by becoming involved yourself. Usability can also be enhanced by integrating intranet, extranet, and portal sites with commercial sites like Facebook and Google. This integration process can go both ways. For example, integrating Facebook or Google Maps into an organization's website and allowing third-party sites to access specific content from the organization's extranet. Larger businesses allow users within their intranet to access the public internet through firewall servers, screening messages coming and going to keep security intact. While we're on the subject, intranets typically feature a broad scope of functionality and a wide variety of content and system interfaces, and so they can be much more complex than their public counterparts. As a result, how usable they are is of special importance since a poor score in this regard can be a real drag on productivity. 
Metrics such as those compiled when tracking page loads and time on site can be illuminating when seeking areas in need of particular improvement. This module has looked into the practice of website usability. Having completed it, you may next wish to review the module on different ways of accessing the Internet. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the Information Certification Exam. This proctor test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.